Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in the industry and more. Today we have intraoral radiographic techniques and its modification in oral radiology. So this session is about uh, periapical radiography, then bite wing and occlusal radiography. In periapical radiography, we have the most important paralleling ankle technique and bisecting ankle technique and also we will be looking into bite wing radiography and occlusal radiography. To begin with intraoral radiographic examinations are the foundation of dental radiography. Uh, it is through which we inspect the teeth and its supporting structures and how do we take it? We keep a film inside the mouth and direct a x-ray beam at various angles from a position outside the mouth through the anatomical region of interest towards the film. So the general steps for taking radiographs are we need to seat the patient, adjust the x-ray unit setting, then position the tube head, then examine the oral cavity, position the film inside the cavity, then position the x-ray tube towards the film, then make the exposure. Now the films, uh, the periapical films can be classified based on the size as 0, 1 and 2. Okay, So 0, 1 and 2. 0 is used for children that is around 3 to 5 years. It is smaller, uh, comparatively smaller one because it is used for the deciduous teeth. It is uh, 22 to 35 millimeter then uh, size 1 24 to 40 millimeter it is used for adults anterior region and children's posterior region and size 2 that is 32 to 41 that is length by breadth it is 32 by 41 not 32 to 41 it is 32 by 41 it is a standard film can use it for adults anterior and posterior and also uh, 9 to 12 years children anterior and posterior so size 0 1 and 2 based on the film speed we have A to E that is A B C D and E A is the slowest and e is the fastest D and E speed films are commonly used in intraoral periapical radiography E speed films has half the exposure time than the D speed films so it has large silver bromide crystals and increased silver bromide in emulsion. So what are the types of intraoral radiography? We have three types. This is the periapical radiography. This is the bite wing radiography. And this is the occlusal radiography. This is the maxilla. And this is mandible. So the first one, periapical radiography, it is to record the images of the outlines, position and mesiodistal extension of teeth and surrounding tissues. So periapical radiographs must contain the full length of tooth and at least 2 mm of periapical bone. So this is a lesion, this is a lesion, it is located at the apex. So in order to understand the full details of this lesion, we need to have 2 mm of periapical bone. That is what is known as periapical radiography. So it is indicated when there is periapical infection or inflammation to understand the periodontal status and also to uh, know the root morphology before uh, extraction, especially the complicated extraction. And in endodontics, uh, we need to understand the working length, we need to understand the uh, apical foramen status and to understand the implants post-operatively and also to get a detailed picture of trauma to teeth and alveolar bone. So there are two techniques to take periapical radiographs. They are paralleling or right angle or long cone technique, bisecting or short cone technique. So it can be asked as uh, paralleling, right angle or long cone. 
and it could be a short con technique so you need to know all the names because it's a very common question so what is a uh, paralleling ankle technique it is also known as right ankle long con technique so the principles are the image receptor or the x-ray film or digital sensor placed in holder okay so it is placed in holder so we can see the film here behind the teeth okay this is the x-ray tube and we have a film holder and a indicator road here indicator road here so this is positioned parallel to the long axis of tooth okay the x-ray tube head is this is the x-ray tube head which is right angle to the film and so here the image receptor it is kept parallel to the long axis of tooth okay so this is parallel to the long axis of tooth and the x-ray tube is right angle to the film and tooth so from here the x-ray will be produced so here will be the x-ray tube so this is the x-ray tube this is a film so when long con beam technique there will be less magnification and increased definition okay so we can see the object and its image here when there is ma when there is a uh, longer uh, cone so you can see the longer cone this is a longer cone the image is slightly magnified okay when there is shorter cone this is a shorter cone the magnified image will be there okay so this is so this picture shows the long cone when there is a long cone the image magnification will be less and there will be more well defined the resulting image whereas a shorter cone will result in a magnified image okay with less definition so we need slight magnification with more definition so that is the advantage of long cone when there is long cone it will result in more defined and less magnified image so that is the idea of paralleling technique so film position uh, for maxillary incisors and canine it is kept at vault of palate and mandibular incisors and canine floor of the mouth in line with lower canine and or first premolars for maxillary premolars and molars it should be at midline of palate and mandibular premolars and molars at the lingual sulcus okay so this is a long axis of tooth film is placed at parallel to the long axis of tooth this is the film holder and this is the x-ray produced from x-ray tube okay and the x-ray tube or x-ray produced will be at right angle to the long axis of tooth and the film so position of tube head tube head is a x-ray tube head that is film should be placed so that it cover the particular teeth to be examined and vertical angulation that is a central ray of x-ray beam should be perpendicular to film and long axis so the central ray should be perpendicular to the long axis of tooth and the film and this film should be placed so that it covers a particular teeth to be examined so we are taking x-ray of this tooth so the film should be placed in such a way that it covers the entire tooth okay sometimes if this is mispositioned the entire tooth will not be obtained and the horizontal angulation that is central ray of x-ray beam through the contact area between the teeth 
and central ray of X-ray must be directed to the center of the film to completely cover the film. The advantages of paralleling techniques are accuracy, simplicity, uh, duplication, the periodontal bone level and there will not be uh, any concutting. So well defined periodontal bone level is obtained. Disadvantages are the film placement is little uh, difficult and there will be increased exposure time and the holders need to be autoclaved and only 20 degree margin of error. So these are the maxillary teeth projections for the central incisor. It should be like this premolars. This is the premolars and the canines and the molar region. So the angulation of tube head is changing. This is almost 90 degree. This is around 40, 45 degree. This is parallel to the root, I mean tooth. So similarly in mandibular teeth, this is the incisor, premolar, canine and molar region. So the modifications, if there is shallow palate, cotton rolls on either side of the bite block, then increased vertical angulation. And in case of bony growth, tori also we need to modify uh, the placement. Mandibular premolar region. So mild uh, film curvature. Uh, should be recommended to avoid the anatomic constraint area. So the next technique is bisecting ankle technique which is also known as short cone technique. The principle is Sisinki's rule of isometry. It says two triangles are equal when they share one complete side and have two equal angles. Okay, so this is uh, Sisinki's rule. This is a triangle. Okay, this is a triangle. So it has one common side and two equal angles. So film is placed close to teeth. So the film is placed close to teeth. So the angle between long axis of teeth and long axis of film is bisected. So the angle between long axis of the tooth, this is a long axis of tooth and the long axis of film is bisected. This is an imaginary bisector. Okay, so imaginary bisector and the central ray is coming at perpendicular to this bisecting line okay so the x-ray tube head is right ankle to this bisecting line so the actual length of the tooth in mouth will be equal to the length of tooth on image so the actual length of tooth in mouth will be equal to the length of tooth on image so this is the one side of the triangle and this is the other side of triangle. Okay. So this is Sisinki's rule. So this will be equal to this. That is a. So since it is uh, isometric triangle, the last sentence that is the actual length of tooth in mouth will be equal to the length of tooth tooth on image so this is the actual length of tooth in mouth this is the image that is the image produced here so this two will be equal okay because the angle are equal these two angles are equal so film placement, uh, so hope you understood this concept of Sisinki's rule of isometry because two triangles are equal when they share one complete side and have two equal angles. So 
we have two equal angles here and here so the sides will be same so the film placement is close to teeth and anterior vertical and posterior horizontal mm, that is the position of film so in anterior teeth we keep it uh, at a vertical uh, fashion and posterior we should be at horizontal level and there is two methods either we can use a film holder or uh, digital method so the vertical angulation so we can see this is a occlusal plane and this is a mid sagittal plane so this is zero angulation and this is 90 degree angulation 60 degree and 30 degree 30 60 and 90 degree okay so angulation will be changed according to the tooth to be x-rayed so we have maxilla and mandible the molar should be 25 to 30 degree that is plus 30 premolars plus 40 canines plus 50 and incisors 55 bite wings 10 degree whereas the mandible it is minus 10 for molars it is 0 premolars minus 10 minus 15 and minus 20 okay so this is angulation horizontal angulation central tray perpendicular to the curvature of arch and through the contact area of teeth so in molars uh, zero degree transcondylar plane as seen from vertical above the patient okay and in premolars it is 30 degree canines it is 45 degree and incisors it is 90 degree and this picture shows the point of entry of x-ray beam so we can make out maxillary this is incisors through the tip of nose canine ala of nose premolars uh, pupillary perpendicular to the AT line and the molars outer canthus of eye perpendicular to this AT line and mandibular teeth the incisors through the tip of chin, canines angle of mouth, premolars pupillary line, molars outer canthus of eye, third molar the ICM behind outer canthus. So the advantage of uh, this bisecting ankle technique is it is simple and quick. Film positioning is reasonably comfortable for the patient. Can hold the pay, uh, film. Uh, using his finger decreased exposure time as short distance is used if all angulations are assessed correctly exact replica image can be obtained in paralleling technique we get a slightly magnified image because we are using a long con technique this is short con technique we are keeping the image as close to the teeth as possible and there is no sterilization of holders are required but the disadvantages are image distortion there will be angulation problems and con cut digital film holding method uh, then shadow of zygomatic bone frequently lies over the roots of upper molars then buccal roots of premolars and molars are foreshortened the crowns of teeth are often distorted in films preventing the dete detection of those uh, proximal caries and not possible to obtain reproducible views so the modifications when there is shallow palate we need to use cotton rolls and to also increase the vertical angulation okay so this is how we use cotton rolls and also modifications required when there is mandibular torre and 
maxillary tori, mandibular tori and maxillary tori. So people with gag, re gag reflex or obese or children people, uh, we need to make them relax and reassure the patient. We need to distract the patient and we need to apply a little bit of topical agent such as uh, mouthwash or spray and uh, reducing psychic and tactile stimuli. So third molars we may need to use this holder because keeping a position at third molar position is too difficult. So in endodontics uh, the difficulties are film placement and stabilization we need to understand exactly at the root apex and the working length sometimes the uh, obturation so identification and separation of root canals and assessing root canal length so we need to uh, keep special image receptor holder and taking two radiographs with two horizontal angulation to understand the root canals for also edangulus ridge we need to go for panoramic radiograph and in children small size mouth or very small size children we need to go for uh, modified bisecting angle technique next we have bite wing radiography it is include uh, crowns of both maxilla and mandible and alveolar crest of the the same receptor so it is mainly to use so it is like this alveolar crest and crowns of maxilla and mandible it is to detect the interproximal caries and to monitor progression of dental caries detection of secondary caries below any restoration and also to evaluate the periodontal conditions and alveolar bone crest levels and also for detecting calculus in interproximal area so the advantages are it is very simple film packet held firmly in position and cannot be displaced by tongue position of the x-ray tube head is determined by the holder thus it is less operator dependent ensuring that the x-ray beam is always at right angle to the film packet and it avoids conning off of anterior part of film and holders are autoclavable or disposable but the problem is position of holder in mouth is operator dependent it is not accurately reproducible not suitable for monitoring of progression of caries positioning of holders can be uncomfortable for the patient and some holders are relatively very expensive and holders are not usually suitable for children next to the last one is occlusal radiography indicated to locate the retained roots of extracted teeth to locate the supernumerary teeth or unerupted or impacted teeth or to locate the salivary stones index of submandibular gland or to evaluate the extent of lesion in maxilla or mandible or also to examine the areas of cleft palate or to measure the changes in size and shape of maxilla so classification uh, maxilla and mandible occlusal radiograph maxilla it is both are cross-sectional this is topographical anterior posterior lateral and also uh, pediatric so maxillary occlusal topographical okay so it is to view the maxilla for anterior alveolar fracture or to understand the cyst supernumerary teeth or impacted canines on pathology so the patient position and direction of central ray so this is a central ray direction and mandibular topographical occlusal radiograph uses to view the anterior portion of mandible to understand the fractures cyst root tips and periapical pathology and also it provides a very good view of symphysis region of the mandible and this is pointed the central ray of x-ray is going like this at 55 degree so the cross-sectional is taken at 90 degree to view the entire mandible for fracture foreign bodies root tips salivary calculi and tori 
so the direction of central ray is like this 90 degree and posterior oblique maxillary occlusal to view the maxillary posterior region or to view the maxillary sinus the projection may be used in place who have a tendency to gag or to examine the periapical pathology of fruit so central rays directed at 60 degree so similar mandibular occlusal oblique it is directed at minus 50 degree uh, it is to view the posterior teeth or to locate cyst and fractures and also to supernumerary teeth periapical pathology so maxillary vertex occlusal so the direction of central ray it is at 90 degree to view the bucco palatal relationship or unerupted teeth in the dental arch so that's all about uh, the radio uh, graphic techniques the most important techniques are paralleling and bite wing techniques in periapical radiographs and also we learned about bite wing radiographs and occlusal radiographs so this is most commonly asked uh, question that is uh, paralleling technique or bisecting angle technique you need to draw pictures to get the maximum marks and the advantages and disadvantages of paralleling technique and bisecting angle is very important and also the bite wing radiographs and occlusal radiography so i'll come up with a new topic in the industry and more thank you